Okay, so welcome everyone. This is our weekly Wednesday Lunch and Learn with Michelle Brown and myself, Amberly Forrester. We do this every week for at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to bring you topics of personal and professional development that help you uh, in one, getting through these challenging times, but also just in giving you uh, some tips and advice and a place to share and to be heard. Um, you know, we're, we're still kind of seg uh, uh, quarantined and on our own. So it's really been really nice to come together for these 14 weeks and join each other and see these lovely faces uh, and talk about positive things together. So today we are talking about vision boarding. Um, vision boarding is something that's it's really near and dear to my heart. I truly have done this for years since I was a child with my grandmother on New Year's Eve when my mom would go out. Um, I'd be at home doing a burning bowl ceremony and a vision boarding ceremony um, to start out my new year. And it's something that I revisit, revisit year after year. And so um, when one of our guests recommended that we do a vision boarding ceremony, w Michelle and I both went, yeah, well, not ceremony, but session today. Michelle and I went, yeah, let's do it. And so, um, you know, although people don't always traditionally do vision boards in the middle of the year, you can really do your vision board whenever. And we looked at this as a great time to um, explore what your vision looks like for the rest of the year or after quarantine or moving beyond this, you know, because we've had a lot of opportunity to reset during these over three months that we have been uh, quarantined. And so, you know, visions have changed possibly, right? Maybe, maybe new opportunities have come up for you. Maybe you've realized that that thing you were doing for so long is not something that you want to continue doing. Um, and so you have the opportunity to redefine your vision and what that looks like. Um, so we're excited today to uh, do this, to share this experience with you guys. Michelle, you want to say hello and just um, speak to anything? Yeah, board? yeah, yeah. So I didn't start as early as uh, my youth. It was just something I was introduced to. I think after I got, uh, I started my nonprofit in 2011, my Women's Empowerment Nonprofit. It was an exercise that we did. But similar to, to what you just said, Amber, it's, it's I love the creativity that kind of goes into it where you're coming up with phrases or words or pictures. Um, and, you know, this time is a time, you know, especially with COVID and things that are happening around social injustices and, and, and racial discrimination. We're trying to figure out, <clears throat> you know, what, what, what needs to change? What might need to change in my life? How do I want to be a change agent in the world? So, you know, as Amber said, it's always a relevant time to look at our life and determine how we might want to change the course of our life. And this is a great kind of moment for this next 45 minutes or so um, to really center yourself around what you want to envision for yourself in your life. So, yeah, it's, it's and I found for myself, um, a lot of the things that I put on my vision boards over the years have manifested. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, me too. And I'm actually, I'll open up with a little, a quick little story about vision boarding. But if you are going to be vision boarding with us, do not wait to get started. So if you have your materials, feel free to lay them out. And we're just going to have this conversation with you over the next hour as you do your vision board. Um, this is also something you can write down some of the tips. We have 10 tips that we're going to share with you for manifesting your vision. Feel free to write those tips down and to um, let this just be the start of mm -hmm. your vision boarding or are you editing your vision board, uh, but know that you can um, always continue this process. It's not something you can really finish in an hour. So, right. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll share a quick story with you. Uh, so it'll start with um, when I was a kid. So when I was a kid, my mom would go out for New Year's Eve. I would go over to my grandmother's house with my cousin and we would do a burning bowl ceremony. And in that burning bowl ceremony, we would look at, and this is, I mean, this is us at like 11, 12 years old. We would look at the past year and we would think, what is it that we need to leave behind of what no longer serves us? Um, what do we want to leave behind? What doubts or fears or um, shame or uh, things to forgive. What is it that that no longer serves us? And these were really um, 
powerful questions to ask ourselves, especially as a kid, you know, to start thinking about it at that point of what no longer serves you. You say that to like an 11, 12 year old and it's like, what does that mean? You know, but I would even as a child look at um, if there were habits in school that got in the way of my schoolwork and my performance, or if I had, um, if there were, if I had a, an argument or a disagreement with someone and wish that I handled it differently or recognized, like, you know, just these little things that even as a young child, I could recognize that, oh, you know, that doesn't really serve me so well. And so we would write those things down. We would um, write them down. We would acknowledge them and, and bring them out into the open. And then we would burn the paper in a bowl and we would let that go. And that burning was symbolic of us leaving that behind. And so after we did our burning bowl ceremony, we would do our vision boarding. Um, and this is not, we, I didn't start the vision boarding until I was a little older. We would just do the burning bowl ceremony at first. But the vision boarding then let us look at the future and establish what do we want to move toward, towards. So what do we need to leave behind in the past and what do we want to move into? And so um, the intention behind a vision board, I think is one of the most important parts of really not just flowing through life haphazardly and saying, you know, I'll just let things happen, but really being intentional about what it is that we want to manifest in our lives. And um, of course, I'm always going to give you the psychology behind that, right? So a part of the psychology behind that is that um, there's, there's, uh, if you've heard, there's what's called our reticular uh uh, activation system. I think I'm referencing that properly. So um, I reference it as this, and I've said this before, so you guys may be familiar with this, but if you get a red Jeep, all of a sudden, when you're driving down the street, you're starting to see, oh, there's another red Jeep. Oh, there's another red Jeep. Have you ever gotten a new car? And now all of a sudden, it's like everybody has this car and you never noticed it before. Well, your reticular activation system is what is how your brain works. And now that you're familiar with this thing, you notice it more. And so that's a part of the way that the vision board works, um, and Michelle will speak to this in terms of the law of attraction, but like scientifically, uh, in the way that when you identify something that you will now focus on, you'll start to see it more. And so when you set a goal or when you create a vision for yourself, you may have been seeing parts of this vision um, manifesting in your life and not been aware of it. It could be unconscious because you, you didn't particularly put it down on paper or you didn't particularly uh, or deliberately, I should say, direct your attention into that space. But when you're deliberate about directing your attention into that space, you notice that thing more. And so sometimes there are blessings right in front of us that are happening that we're not recognizing are a part of the alignment of like our overall vision for ourselves coming together just because we're not clear enough. Um, but with, with being deliberate and with uh, having clarity around what we want, we're able to recognize when things are starting to fall into place. Um, so with that, because I don't want to go into too much of, um, of taking away from our tips that we have, um, but that's just kind of my opening story for this. And uh, Michelle, you speak so well about um, the law of attraction and how this relates. So if you could uh, speak to that and then we'll hop into the tips. Um, I think we, we would be remiss if we didn't talk about the law of attraction because that's a huge part of this. You're, you're on mute, Michelle. I was typing. Okay. So yeah, the law of attraction is one of many irrefutable universal laws. Um, and I remember being introduced to it by Esther Hicks. Um, I won't give you that backstory. Many of you may know who she is. She was one of the sources for the documentary and the book, um, the, the, uh, the Secret. But it's the way we as spiritual beings having a human experience uh, operate, meaning when we channel our energy and to Amber's point, focus our energy and our intention towards something and that something can be both intrinsic and it doesn't have to be one thing so let me not make it appear as if it's just singular but you know it's it's we're channeling and focusing our energy towards an outcome that we wish to manifest what happens and this is just miraculous the universe conspires to bring it to us you know there is something called the bead you have 
meaning we are, we call ourselves human beings, but we're really human doers. We believe that we have to exert effort and society supports that. But quite honestly, to work with, Hello. Oh, sorry, to work um, and be aligned with the universe, source, God, whatever you want to call this higher power, oftentimes all we have to do is imagine and envision um, what it is that we want. And by nature of focusing in on that with real channeled intention, and we're going to talk about this as one of the tips, really believing it and acting as if the universe conspires to kind of bring it to us. Um, and the one point before we get into the tips that I wanted to kind of add and, and underscore a lot of what Amber just shared, even as you all are creatively creating your vision board right now, think about it in terms of intrinsic and entric extrinsic, meaning, you know, a lot of times we think about the extrinsic, you know, I want to be able to, I don't know, buy my first house or move to a really nice condo or some goal that is external. That absolutely can be part of your vision, but also intrinsically, it could be who you want to become. You know, I think about um, Michelle Obama's book, Becoming, right? Life is a process. And sometimes a lot of the development that we want to do um, as spiritual beings having a human experience is an internal uh, thing. So it may be, I want to be more confident. I want to be more powerful. Um, I want to be more outspoken. You know, so again, your visioning for yourself can be both external, extrinsic goals, as well as internal or intrinsic, because all of that is what defines success for you. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So well said. Thank you, Michelle. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So should we, let's just go ahead and dig right in. I'm going to play yeah. a little music in the background because this is uh, a creative working session that we're doing together. Um, and again, just to remind everyone, as we're going through these tips, um, by all means, we want to make this interactive and participatory. So, you know, as you're creatively doing your boards, if you've got questions or comments or thoughts behind any of the tips, or you have a story you want to share, please unmute yourself or put it in the chat because we want to make sure that it's not just Amber and I speaking. We want to hear from you guys as well. Yes, yes. Um, so I'm going to actually start by, I'm going to show you one of my vision boards. Actually, I have to move back because it's taped to the wall. I have three of them up here. Here, I'll show you this one first just as a good example. So I'm in my office and I keep my vision boards in my office. Um, I, we're going to talk about that as a tip of keeping your, your board where you can see it and why that's important. Um, but on my vision board, you'll see this one is a mix of my handwriting and words that I've put on. I am being at the center because I'm big on the power of I am. Uh, and then typed words that I've taken, phrases that I've taken from magazines, it's meant to be, which reminds me to trust, enjoy it, enjoy the process, um, power with purpose, discover wellness, feel and look good inside and out. There are also photos of people who inspire me, who I am either inspired by what they do or who they are, or would look to embody some of their characteristics. There are people, like I, I'm uh, doing work with children, so I have this this block of kids here and it says upbeat kids five steps to positivity representing my work with uh with kids there's the book uh audacity of hope barack obama i'm working on a book and these are these are images that uh on a daily basis are reminders for me of the vision that i have and why i work so hard and what i do um and i'm showing you that also and i'll show you this one too just to say that your vision board should have your style and your personality to it. So there's no, you know, on some people see this vision board and they say, oh, you like you write on your vision board. Yeah, you can write on your vision board. You can write the words. You can, you can take one letter at a time from a magazine and put letters together to make the words. Um, you can put pictures. Um, yeah, there's, there's not really rules for your vision boards because it's something that should feel good to you um, but we're just going to give you tips on how to actually make your uh, vision come to life and then I'll share another story with you at some point of how 
how my vision boards have literally come to life in, fr in front of my eyes. It's like pretty amazing. Um, Can I share mine before we get into the tips? What'd you say? Or should I wait? Till Can I share my vision board or should I wait until later? Yeah, yeah, share yours. And then you want to take tip number one and then I'll do number two? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you guys can see mine. Um, wait, here we go. So um, very similar to Amber, I put myself in the center. Yellow happens to be my favorite color. And I just sort of like the fact that you know, I found this kind of yellow flowery looking thing. And if there's anything that I enjoy doing, it's smiling. So that's me sort of overlaying that. One of the things that really meant a lot to me um, as I was becoming is there's this expression, good girls done playing nice, right? I mean, I have a kind of a reputation of being, you know, a nice girl. You know, sometimes nice doesn't always work. So this was affirming for myself that, you know, I will always be respectful, but I don't always have to play nice. Um, power is incredibly important to me as I continue to age and find my voice. Um, uh, devoted, fabulous, which is how I define myself at every age, right? I'm embracing the aging process. Um, as I entered into my 60s, I really had to recognize that, you know what, I'd rather be aging as opposed to what the alternative is, standing out. Um, there's a picture here of a woman with a three carat diamond. So I am currently divorced Seeking at this point as God sends me the right partner, but you know what? I like the bling bling, so I'm looking to have a nice rock on my hand at some point in the foreseeable future. So any eligible men out here listening to this, take heed. Um, come as you are. So the ring on it. Board for me. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, so this board for me just kind of represents a lot of intrinsic um, uh, goals that I had in mind as as I grow and mature. All right, so starting off with our tip number one, <clears throat> believing, believe it to see it and see it to believe it, right? So when we talk about faith, right, the definition of faith and certainly how scripture makes reference to it, it's the substance of things not seen and the um, evidence of the substance of things not seen and the, what is it exactly? I'm terrible. Substance of things not seen and the, and the evidence of things believed. I think I'm completely paraphrasing it, but suffice to say that when we're envisioning what we want for ourselves in our life, we don't necessarily have to wait until we see it. It's a, a belief that we have in its possibility, um, acting as if it's believing it before we see it, and then it will be manifested, then it will come into fruition. Trusting in the ability that it is possible, even if it seems a hair shy of impossible. It may, uh, given our life situation and circumstances, may seem so out of reach. If you believe it, um, you'll be able to see it. So yeah, that's tip number one. Yeah. And I love that because so often we think of you got to see it to believe it, but it's really, you got to believe it to see it because if you, and there's a bit mm -hmm. of both, right? But if you don't, if you don't, if you don't believe it, then it's highly likely that it's, it's not going to manifest in your life. If you set goals and you don't believe in them, then you are actually working to self-sabotage yourself in the background because you're continuing to tell yourself, in the in the in your thoughts which your unconscious is what's ruling most of your conscious actions are actually more ruled by your unconscious and so you're you're you could be saying that i want this goal but if you don't believe that goal in the back of your head you're going i can't have that i can't do that and so it is so important that you actually believe what it is that you want to see um and so i'm going to move us to number two having focus and clarity this is big um so as a coach when i work with clients, a lot of times it's so easy uh, for people to say what they don't want, right? But then my question in moving them forward is now, what do you want? 
And that's a part of what you represent on your vision board, what you do want. Because the brain doesn't recognize, uh, the way that our brains work, it doesn't recognize no or not. It recognizes the thought without with extracting the not so you have to think about things in the positive and not in the negative because you can't think you can't not think about something right you can only think about something and so that directs our focus and so when we are focusing on what we do want the energy is following that thought and whatever we focus on increases right and so that's a part of uh, using your vision board is using it to help you to focus on what you do want and so you know, it doesn't even have to be literal in the representation. It just needs to uh, be something that reminds you of what you want. So if you want to travel, um, yeah, you should, you should put places that you want to go to on your board. But by putting places on your board that represent um, maybe even how you want to feel when you get there, it's, it's helping your energy to follow that thought. So it could be, it doesn't, it could just be you on a beach and it doesn't matter what beach, but maybe you just like beaches and you need that, that um, calm serenity of the beach. And, and that's a part of what you represent on your vision board. Um, yeah, I think that's enough said about that, right? I don't know, Michelle, what do you focus on clarity? What do you want to weigh in on that? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, I'm just kind of saying what you just said. It's, it's having laser focus in and not allowing distractions to kind of get in the way. Um, we are so powerful. We are much more powerful than we could possibly imagine. Hence the truest essence of our nature, which is spirit, um, which is connected to this higher power. When we are laser focused in um, and have clarity around what it is that we want. Let me give you an example um, without taking us away. Um, I remember 15 years ago when I was in corporate and didn't want to do that much anymore, could not see myself getting into my 60s and 70s, you know, doing the same thing. And I knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I knew I wanted to start my own business. Well, I was scared to death. I had no idea whatsoever about, you know, how to go about it and how I could possibly, you know, uncuff these golden handcuffs to be able to make a living for myself. But you know, I definitely believed that it was possible. I didn't know the how, I just knew the what. And in terms of focus and clarity, I was so laser focused on this is a possibility that I wanted to create for myself. What I experienced, because it is a process, is that doors started opening up. I started to speak to people who were suggesting coaching and introduced me to a coaching, um, uh, global coaching firm. and. I say that to say that all I started with was a vision of what it was that I wanted to do and that's the universe supported me. So yeah, that was just my own example of how this manifestation and visioning and focus and clarity kind of came, um, came about for me. Mm -hmm. So tip number three, release doubt and limiting beliefs. So that's huge, ladies and gentlemen. You know, <laughs> our rational mind will lie to us so often. And it is so imperative for us to recognize what the doubt or limiting belief, in plural, doubts or doubts and limiting belief or limiting beliefs, so that we can question their validity. You know, the ego is quite tricky in the sense that oftentimes, you know, it will introduce a thought, no, you can't do that. That is the most ridiculous thing. Look how many people have tried it or try to be it and they can't. We have to recognize what those doubts and limiting beliefs are, separate them, question their validity and turn it around. So, you know, as we are creating a vision for ourselves in our life that is intended to have us be our best self, as Oprah says, um, and to, to bring about anything that we want for ourselves and our lives. It's getting out of the way of what we think is not possible, because quite honestly, nothing is impossible. The other key to that is sometimes they say, you know what, when you are looking to create a future for yourself, and even as you guys are putting your vision boards together, you may share them with people 
And people in your circle may look at what you're envisioning and they may be the naysayers. They may be the ones who are telling you, you know, you're too old to get your graduate degree or, you know, you are not, um, I don't know, smart enough to start your own business at whatever age, whatever it is. So be mindful of either yourself being that naysayer or other people being a naysayer. Um, because again, you want to be able to shift your belief to what you believe is possible. And again, let the universe really kind of help move things out of the way to, to help bring it about. Or move people out of the way to help bring it about because being around the naysayers may be a part of what you need to leave behind. You know, the people That's who don't right. see the new vision for you, the people who put you in a box, maybe people that no longer serve you. Um, and not to be cold in saying that, but just to recognize that some people don't have to occupy as much space um, as they have in the past. And maybe they're new people that should occupy more space. Um, yeah, we have LaManda joining us. And I don't know if she can hear us yet, but LaManda is actually, um, was the person who suggested that we do this vision boarding. So LaManda, hi, we're glad to have you with us. <laughs> Yeah, we're just going through some tips on vision boarding, but this is interactive. And so we just want to invite folks to chime in. Um, so so let's just kind of take a break for a second and, and talk about the first three that we just discussed. Does anyone have anything to say around believe it to see it, see it, see it to believe it, have clarity and focus and release doubt and limiting beliefs? Any questions or comments? No? Not yet? Okay. Oh, Stephanie has a question. Come on, Stephanie, if you want to just unmute yourself. Hi, everybody. Happy Wednesday. We're in Corona Town and we are still here and gathered. This is lovely. <laughs> <laughs> so my question is this. Um, first of all, thank you for this um, topic today. Shout out to LaManda because this is right on time. I think if there's something that everyone has right now is a bit more time. You may not appreciate it. You might appreciate it, but you have a bit more time to focus on so much more. And um, I'd like to, first of all, thank Michelle. I'm, I'm going to shout you out, Michelle, so get ready. Here we go. So I met Michelle at a uh, uh, networking event in New Jersey, and we were talking about different things. And Michelle gave me some advice at the end of the meeting. She said, Stephanie, um, I don't know if you considered this, but I see you doing this thing. And I looked at her, frankly, like she was not quite there. And she said, and she said, no, no, I really see you doing this thing. And deep, deep within, I knew she was right. I knew she was right because there were times in my past where I could see myself doing that thing but I thought maybe, you know, I was just, I don't know, not thinking correctly, whatever. So it was confirmed with the conversation by Michelle. And I Tell actually- Tell us what the thing is. Tell us what the thing was. I, 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 abs I absolutely will not. No, I will. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. So I, I, I put, <laughs> so I put together a vision board. I put together a vision board. And I'm telling you, one of the things that I put, it said, um, dream goal, voice talent job. Now, that vision, that vision was already on the wall in my apartment before I met Michelle. It was already there. And on the wall, it says establish 2018 dream goal voice talent job. And I would see it every day walking around the apartment doing whatever I'm doing, you know, uh, you know, voice talent job. Then I meet Michelle and she drops it on me and she says, Stephanie, she says, Stephanie, I could see you doing a one woman show telling stories. And I looked at her and I said, oh, she's a nice lady. She's very elegant. She's very pretty too. I really love her style, but I don't think, I don't think she's quite, mm -hmm. well, long story short, <laughs> and we all know Michelle and Amber are the truth. We know this. I didn't know it then. When you're in the presence of greatness, sometimes things prevent you from seeing the greatness of who you're with so you can listen. And I listened. Since then, certain things, along with the vision board, certain things have just appeared. I kid you not, certain things have appeared, and I am grateful 
for that. Um, I've created a website, I've um, done speaking engagements, and Michelle is like that fairy godmother who says, hey, hey, listen, hey, she doesn't say it like that. That's not her style. But she'll say, hey, listen, I came across this. You should check it out. So what I'm trying to say is it works. It actually works. Even when you're not quite ready for it to come to the surface, because it's within you, but someone a lot of times can see it outside of you and they can help it emerge from the core to the surface. The beautiful thing is once it pushes through and comes to the surface and you make peace with it, that it is on its way, that's it. That's what you want. So again, thank you for this. Um, guys, get your vision board and keep it simple, you know, baby steps until you can handle a bit more because it's a bit unsettling. It's a bit unsettling to look at a goal that you have planted deep within you to see it every day and to somehow see all the pieces start to line up. And you may not share it with your friends, you may not share it with your loved ones, you may not share it with people that you know and trust, but you know the truth and you know when you start to see pieces line up, you know, and you say to yourself, oh my God, it's happening. So, <laughs> it's, <laughs> so it's really true. So thank you so much. And I'm done. And so Amber good. and Michelle, um, if I can, I just wanted to chime in. The thing that Stephanie touched upon, just building upon that, when you put something up on your vision board and it manifests, it blows your mind. I don't know if anyone else has that like reaction, but when it literally breaks through and you see manifestation, you're like, oh snap, it's crazy. <laughs> but the other thing that I recently learned was that even if something has not come into fruition yet and manifested, you still keep it up. You just mm -hmm. keep continuing to build on top of your vision board. I used to kind of chuck mine away and start afresh and anew, but um, I received guidance that no, just because God hasn't allowed it to break through yet, or maybe it, it might not even break through, you, you just keep building upon your vision. So I just wanted to share that as well. Yes, yes. Um, that, Michelle, did you want to respond before? No, 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 no. I, I was just mentioning, thinking to myself, this is a perfect segue to tip number four. It is, it is. That's okay. what I was just thinking. I got excited for it. So tip number four, um, which Stephanie and LaMonda prompted us so well for, is to be patient and know that what you want is on its way. And it may not always come there in the exact form that you thought it would, um, because sometimes, you know, they say when, uh, what do they say? If you want to see God laugh, tell him your plans. Um, however, mm -hmm. it moves us in that direction. So with that, I'll give you a quick little story again. So I had a vision board and I cut out um, images from this apartment. It was a condo, a two-story condo uh, penthouse in Miami. I lived in Miami at the time and I lived in a nice condo, but it wasn't like this condo that I saw. I cut these images out of this condo, the kitchen and the bathroom, and I placed them in different parts of the vision board because I believe in not compartmentalizing your vision, like, like um, you know, spreading it out because your life is, is all woven together. And so, you know, um, I put, so I didn't just put all the home in one place. I put the home in different parts on my vision board. And I done that vision board. I had other things on it about my family and my career. And at the time I was single, I had no kids. I was living in a, a condo in Miami by myself. And um, this was my vision, I'm in my twenties. So fast forward to like a year or two later, I'm with my husband, my boyfriend at the time, and we go to visit his aunt, or I'm sorry, his cousin. And so we go to visit his cousin. She lives in an apartment, um, top floor. We knock on her door and she opens the door. And this woman, first off, is just beautiful. I just admire her so much. She's elegant, she's magnificent. And so I was happy we were going to her house. She opens the door. And when she opens the door, I realize that I am walking into the apartment that was on my vision board. Oh my God. <laughs> it wasn't my apartment. So no, it wasn't that it came to me and that now I own this apartment, this condo, but it was hers. And I go, I get chills now just talking about it. I, the look on my face, she's like, are you okay? And I'm like, I just know where your bathroom is. I know what your 
what your closets look like. I know what your kitchen looks like. I said, was your, was this apartment in this magazine? Maybe it was Ocean Drive or something magazine. And she says, yeah, it was. And I was like, oh. this is crazy. This is on my vision board. Mm -hmm. And so it gave me confirmation on a few things. One, that like a vision board, how powerful is that? Of all the millions of apartments that I could have walked into, I walked into the one on my vision board. I had no idea that this was her place at, in any way. And I did the vision board before I even met my husband. But now I'm looking at this man that I'm with and it's given me confirmation that, you know what? this might really be the guy I'm supposed to be with. I just walked into my vision while with him and it was just so major. And so, you know, that was a couple years past. So this just speaks to being patient um, and knowing that what you want is on its way and recognizing that it, it, it doesn't always come exactly as you plan, but it comes. So, so that's number four, the tip. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So tip number five is allow yourself to really dream and picture the life you want. You know, we are energy people, we're energy. This body, this package that we're in is really not the true essence of who we are. Our imagination is our power, it's our superpower. So when you are envisioning what you want for yourself in your life, whether it's expressions or pictures or words that you're now going to put on your vision board, just stretch your imagination out as far as you could possibly and put down whatever inspires you. Just allow your mind to just kind of, or your soul or your spirit to, you know, kind of leave the confounds of um, this world or what you believe is possible. Um, because again, this is when we can kind of unleash um, what is more possible what oftentimes we may think is impossible so use your imagination as your superpower yeah yeah and so wow. for, some, for some people um so number six so this this uh adds on to what michelle just mentioned of your imagination as the superpower take a quantum leap and for some people we recognize that that may look different michelle and i have exercised that muscle of belief and so it's easier for us to say and and lamanda and stephanie and and verna some of the comments i know you all have exercised that muscle of belief and so it's 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 easier for us than someone who does not have that confidence just yet in understanding and 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 believing and knowing. Uh, and so what I recommend for people who are like, eh, I'm new to this process and that sounds nice, but I don't really believe that, is that you can either set smart goals or brave goals or both, a combination of both. So your quantum leap may look small to someone else, but it could be huge to you. If you're the type of person who doesn't change easily, then just making a change for you could be a quantum leap. And so we're gonna um, honor that and celebrate that and not discount that because it's not the quantum leap of what someone else would look like, uh, a quantum leap would look like for someone else. This is personal to you. So with, um, with when people are less, okay, so I'll, I'll describe a brave goal first. A brave goal is like that, quantum leap it's brave goals are big they're risky they're audacious they're visionary and they're endless okay they're brave goals they're like this like um uh, my my vision boards have a lot of brave goal things on them because i've exercised that muscle but the way i got to uh, setting brave goals was by first setting smart goals which i'm sure a lot of you all are familiar with um, a smart goal is specific it's measurable, something that you can actually say, quantify and say, um, or qualitative, qualitatively or quantitatively, you can measure your movement towards that goal. Um, but a SMART goal, the different, one of the big differences in a SMART goal and a BRAVE goal is a SMART goal is attainable. It's something that you believe easily is attainable so that you can exercise that muscle of, okay, I reached that goal, that was attainable, I did that. And now you can start to set braver, bigger, riskier goals when you start to accomplish your, your more uh, specific, measurable, and attainable goals. SMART goals are also realistic. So it's something like, you know, again, speaking back to the beginning where we talked about if your vision board has something, 
if it's too brave and too big and risky and audacious for you, then it's, it, you can look at it and it can be daunting. It can start to feel like I can't have that. And so you start talking yourself out of it. And that's what you don't want to do. You want to have something that, that you truly believe that, that encourages you and moves you towards um, taking a quantum leap, whatever that quantum leap looks like a quantum step it can be. Um, and timely, uh, realistic and timely. T timely is the T in SMART goals. And so timely, just meaning that it's, it's um, relevant to what is happening with you right now. It's a, it's, you're motivated based on whatever is going on in your life um, to actually achieve that goal. So I urge you all to ask yourselves, what does your quantum leap look like? And I see that Stephanie has a question about expectations. So mm -hmm. this will be a great time to chime in with that. Stephanie, do you want to unmute? And Amber, real quick, the acronym for BRAVE. I have big, risky, audacious, uh -huh. visionary, and endless. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Stephanie? Yes. Yes, I am. I am back. And this will be 30 seconds. Question about expectation of goals. Now, we're all adults on this call. And we all know when you have an expectation, it's just downright crazy. You know, it's like, I want to be able to fly off this, the roof of this building and land on my two feet. It's like, no, no, you can have your vision board and you can put everything on there. But if you step off the roof, you won't like what happens. So how do you, how do you set with yourself to know a goal vision board or not is like now you don't know see you're setting yourself up for uh, a, li a little bit of heartbreak you're going in the wrong direction or you're 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 uh, creating a vision that uh, you don't need you don't know this 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 is not your ministry you know you know go over to the, the other lane how do, how do you know when that is happening and how to keep yourself out of that particular scenario. Okay, I'm gonna take a stab at it because I get a sense <clears throat> of what your question is. So, and this kind of underscores, when we think about a quantum leap, and if you use the example of <laughs> leaping tall buildings at a seagull bound or jumping off a, a, a skyscraper, all right. If for any reason, and it may sound completely bizarre, if that was some goal or dream or desire some it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to do it you, you could it, it could be i want to parasail i want to parachute right so so what we want to encourage in terms of a quantum leap is and 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 a real manifestation is don't worry so much about the how it's going to come about focus in on the intention of the what that you want because even as Amber said, you know, she put, she had those images of that apartment and it didn't manifest in terms of that's what her residence was, but it became a part of her life because she then met her soon to be husband who then was invited, you know, at the time that they were dating to this place. And this now becomes her reality, her experience of having that type of lifestyle. So, so again, hopefully to answer your, your question or your inquiry, Stephanie, we get caught up in this human paradigm about what we think is impossible. But when you strap on this quantum belief that anything that we want for ourselves and our life is possible because we are a cup of God, we are born in the image and likeness of this supreme being, right? So I'm not here to, you know, shove religion down anyone's throat, but these are the irrefutable laws that we were created by. So when we get past how is this going to happen, then we're trying to act as God. If it's, I want to jump off this building, somehow we will gain an intelligence that will tell us how we can do it in a way that's not going to be our demise. So I'm using your, your example as an extreme metaphor, but don't limit yourself to now how can I get it done? Have the vision, keep it firmly focused and clear in your mind's eye and mm -hmm. allow the universe to present the options to bring it to fruition. And that's what makes this whole envisioning thing and you know, some people put it into the package of the secret, you know, but that's what makes it even so powerful because it's completely aligned spiritually. 
that's what I think in my humble opinion, I think that's why it's also so mind blowing, you know, write the vision, make it plain. It will come to pass. And to your point, Michelle, as it addresses Stephanie's point, nothing's too hard for God. Like with men, it seems impossible, but with God, all things are possible. And it's not, we can't even begin to process how he's going to allow certain things to happen. So we just have to literally trust and just know that with him, it is possible, Mm -hmm. which again, just to, in my humble opinion, has so much synchronicity with the spiritual component. You have to release it and let it go. Yes, yes. Stephanie, you have an amazing voice. I totally see why Michelle walked up to you. And said what she said. <laughs> yes. Stephanie, you're the voice over her all day, every day. Oh my gosh. Um, so, so just to add to that point also that, um, so you want to jump off the building and land with two feet. It could be that God, the universe brings you that parasol. And so it may be that you just need tools to reach that goal. So your expectation is not that you don't do any work for your vision to come to life, but that you say now to the universe, to whatever your higher power is, okay, align me with what I need to manifest my vision. Because although you can't just leap off the the building likely and land on two feet without the parasol, when the parasol comes, then you're like, oh, look at I have that tool. And so there may be some work. There is going to be some work that is required for you to manifest your vision. It's not just putting it up there and expecting it to happen, but recognizing when you may need to train yourself, go out and get some tools, um, go out and meet some new people in order to make that goal happen. And that vision is that reminder of huh, you know what, that person came into my life for a reason, or huh, you know what, that parasol landed right in my lap when I needed it. Um, So, okay, we got a couple more, and we have run it out of time. These things go so quickly. Um, But, okay, um, integrate, don't compartmentalize uh, was uh, what I mentioned when I talked about the placement of... I'll take that one. Yes, that is yours. Sorry, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so so again, you know, as... We're just starting you off on whatever your vision boarding process is today. And we want to just encourage you that don't compartmentalize, meaning whatever is coming to your mind's eye, what's coming into your imagination, just look at your life as this fully integrated holistic system. You know, um, our life is made up of our roles, the positions that we play, what we look like. So again, it's don't compartmentalize, integrate, um, because all of it, you know, will will fit together. Don't feel that you have to, even as you are putting together your vision board, hone in on specific one area of your life. Allow that to be purely a creative process. Um, And I know when I've done the vision boarding, I've put in front of me, and certainly if I've done them in workshops, you know, a myriad of magazines and I'm flipping through the magazines page by page and it could be, um, you know, Vogue or, or Oprah or, oh, or um, Architectural Digest. I'm flipping through and just pictures and phrases um, that resonate so that it's, it's whatever sort of, sort of speaks to your heart is what you can capture because it will eventually tell your story. Yeah. 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 All right. Tip number eight is place it somewhere prominent. Um, so Lachelle Wooten, shout out to Lachelle Wooten if she ever sees this. Lachelle was one of the speakers that we had on the retreat that I did to Grenada like three years ago. And she did a vision boarding experience uh, with us for uh, the attendees of the retreat. And she stressed the importance of not placing your vision board in places where you're not going to see it. Don't put it in your closet. Don't roll it up and put it in the in the basement. Your vision board, in order for it to be something that is reminding you of your vision, you have to see it, right? So my vision board, I actually moved the one on the wall up here, up here just to show you all today, but I keep it right next to my bed. And I wake up and I look at it in the morning and I say my prayers um, at night going to bed and looking at it, not every night, but you know, it is a constant reminder of what my vision is and it's right there. My other vision boards are in my office. I come up and I work from my office and I look at my vision and it reminds me of why I do what I do. So I, we encourage you, place your vision board somewhere where you can see it. Uh, can more people share their vision boards or are they too private? Um, if there's anyone on that wants to share your vision board and you have it, we encourage you to, to please uh, share it. That would be really cool. We'd love to see Go it. Go for it, Bruna. 
Hey there, yes, I would love to share my vision board because I actually uh, mentioned I have a praise report. Yeah, I have a praise report. So I'm a yoga instructor and um, my, my goal, my overarching goal is I want to be an impactful yoga instructor, right? And so uh, uh, while we're in the space of COVID, you know, it's changed completely how I've been driving my career because I'm not in a studio. So, so I do what a yogi does, right? I do the good work, right? I, I committed myself, okay, between 4 and 5 a.m. every morning, I'm meditating and I'm journaling, I'm doing the good work. You know, and I'm connecting with my higher stars, right? What does it look like for me now, God? What does it look like for me now, right? Okay, so last week, praise report, I got a call from this gentleman who wrote A Thousand Seeds of Joy, which is like this phenomenal book about the feminine energy in our state right now. I have the book, actually. The author, Ananda Karnesh, called me. And asked me to build his yoga program. So I have between oh now and the end of the summer. And at the end of the year, all of his teachers were going for a retreat in India. So cut to my vision board. And if you guys can see it, hopefully. All right. So there's India on my vision board. I don't know if you see that. And then over here is how I want it to be impactful. A lot of people meditating. And then they're, you know, doing their downward dogs. I want to build a strong community. And, you know, it kind of, I kind of let go of the expectation what it's supposed to look like. God, I want to be an impactful yoga teacher. What does that look like? And so, you know, it's coming. Like, you know what? It's coming. Opportunities are coming. And so, yeah, I wanted to share that. Praise report with you guys. This is possible. Put it up there. It's going to happen. <laughs> Yes. That's an amazing story. That is phenomenal. That's wow. Incredible. Wow. 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 Verna, I can take that yeah. with you for the next for the rest of the summer. I'm writing yes. with your testimony. Wow. Incredible. <laughs> yes. Yes, wow. yes, yes, yes. Amber, can I wow. ask a question about the yeah. placement? Mm -hmm. So what happens, and I think Stephanie's asking this question too, because I take mine down because mine is in a place, it's in my prayer nook, but my prayer nook is kind of visible when I have company, when people come over, and I don't want people all up in my business. Mm -hmm. So where can you place it, or, or should you just leave it up and just let people see it, because it's kind of personal. That's personal to you, yeah, because if it takes, that's kind of like sharing our goals before, like sharing our goals with the world before they've manifested. So I understand, like, I'm big about not posting things on Facebook or Instagram until they have come into fruition. I, it's, it's just like a sacred thing for me. And so if you feel, if you feel like your board should be in a sacred space, um, then and that space is somewhere that people see, then yeah, I think that, that you do the right thing by taking it down and then putting it back up. But it's whatever feels right for you. Yeah, because if you feel any discomfort around that, you don't want any negative juju on your vision board. It should be all good feeling. And it's for you. It's not for everybody else. Yeah, yeah. So um, Michelle, you thank you. You've placed the, the rest of our list in the chat. Um, but do we want to just quickly mention them at, because I know we're, it's 129. I, I, I want to be respectful of people's time and really stay in integrity. Um, so what we can do, as I even put in the chat, you know, we can post these on um, our respective blogs um, because we don't want to lose, um, yeah, we, we don't want to kind of, um, I, I, I just feel more comfortable that we stay true to our time. Okay. Okay. Sure. So it's, it's 129. You have them here for people who are on Facebook. I'll, I'm just going to literally read them and we're going to give no explanation because they can't see the chat, but people on Facebook, this is why you should join us live on zoom. So um, if that's okay, then I'll read number nine is reflect, meditate and imagine. And number 10 is gratitude, having gratitude and mindfulness and savoring gratitude along the process of manifesting your vision. So Thank you guys for joining us. It's, uh, we got maybe 15, it just turned 1.30, so we're staying within our time as we often try to. Uh, this was great. This was uh, so much fun to do with you guys. Uh, next week, Michelle and I, the topic is Me, Inc., and it is uh, 
becoming the, how do we put it, Michelle? The CEO of your life. Yes, the CEO of your life. Uh, we will also be introducing BAM to you next week, our Business Accelerator Master Course. Uh, and it is for entrepreneurs and aspiring entrepreneurs. We'll be telling you more about it and giving you a special offer. Uh, but for anyone who is interested in starting that business, it's an extension of what we did a few weeks back on how to start and grow your business. But this is a six-week masterclass that you can take with Michelle and I over the summer. So we'll be sharing more with you on that. Um, so join us and please tell your business business owning friends or that friend that's always been talking about starting that business to join us next week. Um, and with that, wait, one thing I just want to add. So we are so grateful. Once again, we're just going to do a shout out to LaMonda for any of you who have been with us on this journey, maybe for the first time, it doesn't matter with any topic that you would like to see us focus on, send us an email, let us know, because we are so inspired. Uh, to be delivering content that is relevant and of interest to you. So keep us posted if there are things that uh, you'd like for us to, to, uh, to share and you want to be a part of. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're planning August. So keep those coming. We got a recommendation from Aria for one on dating. Uh, so oh. we will be talking about doing one of these on date, what dating looks like in 2020 and during quarantine. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Marlon's shaking his head. No. <laughs> Marlon, you'll have to bring some of your boys on that call. So you're not like the right. only guy with right. us. We got we to gotta put some male energy if we're going to be talking about dating. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think I see you blushing. <laughs> <laughs> all right guys this was wonderful thank you so much for joining us this week and every week as we mentioned you can see the replays at bit.ly forward slash ww offering you can also sign up for either of our newsletters and you'll get a link to the replays uh, but we do put all of our replays on both of our pages uh, so you can check out into action coaching intu actioncoaching.com or quartz wellnesscollective.com q-u-a-r-t-z wellnesscollective.com and we will see you same place same time next wednesday have a great blessed wonderful and safe week blessings everyone take Bye. care bye-bye